Hickok 45 here, and I'm in kind of a friendly mood because I've got my big friendly revolver, BFR from Magnum Research. So I thought I'd do something uh, kind of in a friendly vein here, because I also really like these pots, so I'm going to be very friendly towards that pot with a 4570 round. How's this? It put a hole right through it. Let's shoot it again. How's that? Whoop, make sure we're... Okay, we cut there a minute because that first shot and it kind of hung up on me and I don't know what happened. It's the first time it's done it. We both shot it and I've been shooting it some today and, uh, but I don't know, we're gonna finish out. Uh, I reloaded it with five more. We'll see how it does. Okay. You can load this all the way, all five. You know, it's not a problem. Has a transfer bar, safety. Boom. Okay, I think maybe I didn't pull the hammer back all the way or something. Uh, I'm being very uh, deliberate and doing that now. <laughs> Do I have another? Did he fire four or did he fire five? Let's see. Oh, he just fired four. <laughs> okay. Uh, see if I can get to do that again. Maybe I didn't pull it. Maybe that I didn't get it all the way back. Yeah, let's see. We're on empty brass here, by the way. Uh, maybe I pulled it like to right about there. And I, I don't know if I pulled the trigger. I didn't touch the cylinder, did I? I don't know. We'll have to look at the video. But I don't know. We, like I say, that's the first time it's done it, right? As we started the video. And it seems all right. Well, time will tell, won't it, as we continue our escapades with this revolver here today. <laughs> we got this uh, ordered it from uh, Buds because you all have requested it. So I requested it from them. And uh, I've had several requests for this behemoth. The Magnum Research Revolver, and uh, you know, I always look at those requests like, okay, really, y'all want one of those things? You know, I see them at Shot Show and at uh, the NRA meeting. You know, when all the gun companies are set up at those those things, and I think, wow, yeah, maybe we'll do one sometime. I don't know. I don't really have a huge desire to shoot one of those because I really like a fine revolver, as you know, as much or more than anybody. Uh, but I don't know, we had a lot of requests for them, and we've shot a lot of crazy things just based on y'all's requests and things that might be halfway interesting. Nothing I necessarily own or carry around or hunt. Well, I don't hunt, but I just you have a use for. And so, you know, I said, why not? Okay. Uh, these people, strange viewers, want to see this thing, so let's just order one up and see what we think about it. I thought I'd get it in 4570. I mean, why not? If you're going to get one of these, might as well get a big one, right? And uh, so, appreciate Bud's, you know, furnishing that and helping us out. So go to budsgunshop.com and uh, look at all the other fine firearms they have. They have a few that are smaller than this, believe it or not. <laughs> they actually have some really practical firearms. Uh, but anyway, we appreciate that. And uh, be sure you go to the uh, description. And if you're not a member of the NRA, I hope you'll join, okay? And then you'll get a discount there, of course, and then join any other organizations you can afford to do, all right, that you can afford to do. And uh, let's let's take a look at this thing, and then we'll shoot it some more. Now, it's uh, big. Like I said, I thought if we're going to get one of these, might as well get a big one. Came in this big, long box. It even has a Weaver uh, scope mount. Comes with it and everything, because a lot of people would put a scope on it. You see, it's, it's the only reason I brought the box out. It's not necessarily a beautiful box, but, uh, you know, which doesn't bother me, by the way. I think, I think uh, I'd think i rather people put their money, go manufacturers, into the firearm. The FN 509, that struck me when I got that. Here I am, uh, stream of consciousness uh, talking, right? But the 509 uh, FN, when it came, it was in a box just like that, except it said FN on it. I thought, you know, it's just a really nice little brown cardboard box. I still got it. That's, that's cool. Put your money in the firearm. I don't have to have a, a beautiful suitcase that costs $80 to build, you know? All right, back to the topic. Uh, yeah, this is a big old gun. I thought I'd go ahead and get the, it's got the 10 inch barrel and 4570 and uh, try it out. Uh, it's empty and uh, it's not like the Colt single actions it uh, or old action clones or any of that. It uh, has a transfer bar. So like a Ruger Vaquero, you open up the loading gate and it frees up the cylinder. Okay, so you're not half cocking the hammer. And that's a little, I guess you could say, safer. It is easier for people to manipulate. And if you have this in a hunting uh, environment, this is primarily a hunting revolver, right? So it might be really cold. It's kind of cold today. 
My fingers all cracked. Been out in the cold here a lot lately, and uh, you know, so that, that's kind of handy. You don't have to you know cock it and mess with that. Maybe the finer points of it, and you just put the ammo in, close it up, and it's ready to go. All right, and uh, so it's a different sort of action. And then I do notice you you do have to pull it all the way back to to really click there. So so for right now, we'll assume that was my mistake. But as we per proceed to shoot it uh, the truth will come out right so uh so you saw the transfer bar in there if you ever see a, a single action revolver with that bar there that kind of blocks the firing pin it blocks the hammer from hitting the firing pin so until you pull the trigger okay so you're able to put all five in here it doesn't matter that the hammer is down and there's a round under it doesn't matter the hammer can't uh, activate okay so I'll go ahead and put five in, so it just holds five anyway as I load it. Now I wanted to show you one other difference before it gets too dirty. Uh, the base pin, so different from a, you know, again, a cold single action or something. It's, it's a very powerful firearm, as you notice, you know, all the chamberings that this thing comes in. And so it has a little screw, like a set screw on the base pin, and you have to loosen it, and you'll see it jump forward, I think. Come on now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> now, it's not uh, captured, so it could fall out, but uh, you need to do that in order to, and I should open that, uh, loosen it up. And then you pull that on out, and it's brand new, but it, I've, I've had it out several times. So there we go. Let's freeze the cylinder. And that is a chunk. That is a chunk of metal. <laughs> 4570. Uh, it has to be long. Guess why? It's a quiz, yeah, you know why, because all this fine ammo, these are from my hand loads, and we've got some good old federal ammo, we're going to shoot through it, I'm talking about shoot a couple of my hand loads, the 300 grain ammo you see right there, and then we've got some of these wonderful trophy bonded, I might get brave and shoot a couple of those, alright, I mean these are after all handgun rounds, aren't they, isn't that why we're here, we're shooting handgun, so anyway, well, you might like to see that big old chunk of steel, and it seems to be well made, uh, you know, it, uh, by all indication and what I've read, the tolerances are, are close, it's uh, machined well, uh, you don't really find a lot of negative, I've not seen much negative about them at all, other than what's it for, maybe, <laughs> you might see a lot of that, but it seems to be well made, and believe it or not, I, I really wasn't looking forward to shooting it, you know, I just sacrificed myself for you all since y'all requested it, but uh, John and I both were a little bit surprised when we picked it up. Oh, I thought I'd lost the pin. And it comes all the way out, but uh, see right there. But it really doesn't feel as bad as it looks like it ought to. That's what I'm trying to say. See, you've got this little spring-loaded detente in there. So that has to be all the way in, or it will not fire. You cannot cock it. And you can see that little indention in the bottom of the barrel. That's what that goes into to hold the base pin in. Because of so much pressure, one of the issues you have sometimes with a I guess even a Ruger, Colts, uh, any of the typical standard single actions, uh, particularly Colts. I know uh, when I was cowboy action shooting, I, I, people would have uh, replaced their base pin with some kind of special pin that was tighter and all that to make sure it didn't come out. Because you don't want that to come out you know, while you're shooting. Uh, it, I mean, it holds everything together, all the key parts, like the cylinder, right? Pretty important. So then you just push it back in and tighten the screw. All right, so that's not bad, that's not a big deal. Yeah, I, in fact, I welcome that if I have a firearm that kicks like this. Okay, so that'll make sure your base pin doesn't get loose and everything's in order. It's really weird the way that... Now I'm used to the clicks, you know, and the, the bolt and everything clicking and the half cock. You don't get any of that with this. So if you're like me and you just love a Colt or a Colt clone and you can't have anything different uh, from that, you won't like this. But uh, it's a different sort of animal. Okay, so well made. It comes in lots of, I think, a long frame and a short frame, they call it, or a long cylinder, short cylinder. You got one big category of calibers. It'll chamber 4570, 4590, uh, 3030, uh, I think uh, 40, was it 45? 45 Marlin. Uh, just a bunch of the longer rounds it's chambered for. Uh, and, and there's even some overlap in the shorter cylinders. Uh, you, can, you can, I think, even 44 Magnum is available in the long cylinder. For whatever reason but in the shorter cylinder model you got 44 45 colt and 454 casol and all that so i mean look at their website you can see it i think there are at least 10 more than 10 though really different uh chamberings on the thing and then two different uh, sizes overall and then lots of different barrel lengths just to give you the idea uh what you know what's there out there available 
and they seem to be well made. So we'll let you know as we go. It's so far. Magnum Research, Pillager, Minnesota, 4570 government. I just thought I'd get 4570. Could have gotten, could have gotten 500 Magnum or uh, 460 or something like that. But man, what the heck? Let's get this big old. We're gonna get a big old gun. Let's get a big old gun. Use one of these long cartridges. I'll load him up again. Oh boy, what a firearm! Oh, you know that might have been. I meant to. I was gonna go in and clean it before we started, and I didn't. And it could be I've got a little buildup in there. Oops, sorry. Might have gotten a little bit of buildup, and that might have been something that happened there in that opening uh, shot, where a, a round wasn't fully seated in there. You know, I bet that's what it was because I've got one that's it's hitting. Yeah. Yeah, one of those chambers is a little dirty. I'll tell you what I'll do. Yeah, because I have not, I, unusually, or unusual for me, I have not cleaned it yet at all. It just seemed to be working fine. Let's take a quick cut, and I'm going to clean it, and then we'll resume what we're doing. How's that? Yeah, it was a dirty cylinder, and I don't know, I'll take part of the blame for that. Maybe all the blame. The firearm is, uh, the tolerances, I think, are fairly tight, because it's a hunting gun. You know, it's got a scope mount you know it's uh you know drilled and tapped for that and everything so it's a kind of firearm that you would hunt with and you know your very best hunting ammo probably or even hand loads have a scope on it maybe and you you're trying to get the utmost accuracy out of this thing now i can't relate to that because i don't really do that but that's kind of what you're looking for so i think they're trying to make a very accurate gun with close tolerances now i'm not excusing anything I had, I'm just telling you what's happened, okay? I uh, generally shoot these things and clean them, shoot them and clean them, but I, it was just seemed to do fine, and, and you know, it's not the kind of firearm I'm going to shoot 100, 200 times, you know? <laughs> uh, pretty good recoil and everything. But I did shoot it enough to get the sights, I think, where they, they belong, and it was seeming to do okay and, and everything with loading and unloading. So I did, though. It's funny. This, you probably saw this out here. This brush was already out here. I told John before we started the video, I said, you know, I, I haven't cleaned it. I'm going to take that brush out there. I could just run a brush through it if I have to. I'd have to take the cylinder out, but you know, anyway, I'm going to have it here. I'll feel better. That's kind of my do-all stiff brush. It'll work in a... I think a 44, 45, almost any caliber of any size. And if you got grit in the chambers, you know, you can run that through there. A little harder on this, you have to take the cylinder out, of course. But anyway, uh, that's kind of where it was. Well, I went in there and, you know, battle stalled it, cleaned it, and ran a pass through there, and it was really tight. There was dirt in there. I had shots from my hand loads, I guess 10 of them. And, you know, so I might have gotten some lead, some extra dirt from that. And uh, so anyway, I came back out, and here we go. You put those in, they just seat fine. And I could see when I was uh, unloading there, I guess after we cut, I don't know. But the, uh, the couple of those were, they were not going all the way into the recess. So that was the issue there. So those rounds, it's just like an old Smith & Wesson, you know, the recessed cylinders, countersunk as they call it. You know, that head needs to go right in there all the way in. So if there's any dirt up here in the cylinder at all that might slow it down or the end of the brass, the mouth of the brass, doesn't want to go as far forward at all i mean it doesn't take much at all then it's going to affect it back here of course and then the tolerances are tight back here because that's got to spin you know all the way around you know it's got to be free all right so that's what you have so that's why you want to keep your firearms clean that's why i clean them uh over clean them and i clean them more often than probably a lot of you do and we've talked about that in a recent cleaning video I, when i shoot one i go clean it I just hadn't done this one. I don't know. Anyway, so anyway, let you know exactly what, what's going on. And uh, let's shoot the thing now. All right. Let's shoot this target. Uh, we always put this in the box. You know, these go back to the buds for the e-gunner auction. And these targets are always in that box if it's an e-gunner uh, firearm. <laughs> All right. It's accurate at uh, seven or eight yards. So that's all that matters, right? Let's try a little pot smoking. A little more pot smoking. <laughs> How about a two liter? We've not hit one yet. Yeah, 4570 will take care of a two liter. Okay, so she's still spinning freely. So it's amazing what uh, happens when you clean your firearms. Speaking of close tolerances, I've noticed that that chamber needs to be lined up perfectly to get that brass out. It's uh, everything about it is, is tight. It's not designed for speed loading, gunfights on the streets of Dodge or anything, the Wild West. Yeah, okay, feels a lot better. Feels a lot better. 
All right, like I say, as we proceed, we will find out how she works. Uh, so a couple things about it. Uh, it. It does kick, but it's not crazy. It's not crazy. One reason I wanted the 10-inch barrel. It is a heavy firearm, and uh, you would think with a 4570, that would just be knocking you around uh, tremendously, but maybe it's going to shoot too many different things, but it doesn't hurt, really. Okay, I wouldn't want to shoot a couple of 300 rounds maybe through it, but it doesn't hurt. And the reason I brought these firearms out, I've got a 44. Uh, you know, in a practical sense, you're the one who has to decide if this <laughs> has any purpose for you or not, of course. For me, a firearm like good old 44 Magnum, you know, this is a big gun. End frame, that's big enough for me. Okay, that's a big gun, even a long barrel, eight and three eighths. Uh, look how it's almost dwarfed beside this thing. Uh, so, you know, 44 mag for me, even if I was deer hunter or something, that, that would be fine for me. But a lot of people like a 460, a 480, a 500 wind mag, whatever, in our 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, or this, and then all the various chamberings it's available in, because you want a bigger gun, you want a powerful round, and you want to hunt with a handgun. That's the thing. Um, most of us don't have to hunt to get food to eat to survive. Uh, so here I'm getting philosophical, but you know, hunting really, I mean, I guess we shouldn't think of it as a, uh, a sport that turns a lot of people off. I don't hunt, but I know people who do, and they eat what they what they hunt, what they get. Okay, so it's not entirely a game. It's not a sport necessarily, but still, it's a kind of a form. If you think about it, kind of a form though of entertainment in a way. You're getting your own. A game instead of going to the grocery and you know picking it up with someone else killed it okay so you're doing it yourself so you know aside from all the morality issues or ethical issues of all of that it's still you're choosing what you enjoy hunting with so I'm trying to get to the point where I want to make is yeah it might seem really crazy to you that somebody would want to hunt with that or any handgun but you know people hunt with bows they hunt with crossbows they hunt with rifles, so it's really how you want to play that game, okay? In the sense of what I'm talking about. I know it's not just a game, but you know that's part of the endeavor, uh, enjoyment, I guess, for people. They would love to take a deer with this and eat that deer, you know, or a wild hog or whatever it might be, and so they just want the challenge of doing it with a handgun or a bow, you know, or a different kind of rifle. It just depends, okay? So that's one of the main places for a firearm like that. So while you or I or some others might think it's silly or it's not something we would want to do, yeah, to each his own. Uh, I prefer a firearm like this if I want a big revolver. And, and then, you know, that's, that's what I would take deer hunting if I were going to hunt with a revolver. Okay, I also brought this 4570 uh, rifle out here as a comparison as well. You know, this shoots the same cartridges, 4570. This is much, much easier to shoot well. <laughs> Put the sights on the target. I could take 30 shots over there on the hill. I'd probably hit at least 25 times, you know, if the sights are on. It's just uh, easier to shoot, less recoil, longer sight radius, more velocity, and everything. So, again, why would anybody use that? That would be totally stupid when things like this exist. No, everybody chooses their own method, okay? They want a different challenge. Again, bow hunting, handgun, smaller handgun, gigantic handgun, big rifle, small rifle, scope, no scope, iron sights, red dot, okay? So everybody lives differently, so, all right? Uh, let's be tolerant. <laughs> but anyway, that's why I brought these two firearms out here. These are firearms, if I were gonna, again, if I were gonna hunt with a rifle, I'd, I'd take that, or, or let me rephrase that. If I were going to hunt with a 4570, it would probably be that. If I wanted to hunt with a handgun, it'd probably be that. Probably not this, but for a lot of people, it would be this. And that's kind of where it fits. Uh, it's well made, seems to be. Let's shoot some more, okay? I haven't shot across the hill yet, have I? We have to hit the gong with this thing. So let's continue to see how, how she loads. I'll just shoot factory mostly. I don't want to skew the uh, deal here with my hand loads. It might be a little dirtier than others and that, at least till we get some shots, some more shots through here. Of course, if you're out hunting, how many shots of 4570 are you going to fire? I just fired five after we cleaned it. Those went in just fine. Okay. Let's go over there and see if we can hit the gong. I think I uh, got the sights where I need to hold pretty much right on. <sighs> I 
Mm, need some paint on that front sight. <laughs> that lovely sound. Sounds good, doesn't it? Let's try a ram. I think I can pretty much hold right on it. And one on the right. Or rather, whichever one that falls. That's the one I'm shooting at. How's that? All right. <laughs> so, it is a good hunting handgun. You see what I just did? <laughs> I got some meat for the freezer. Some good ram. Let's try the one on the, the lower one there. I think I went low. All right, great hunting firearm. I think I fired five. Did he fire four or did he fire five? You can look at the primers and tell. For new shooters, see that dent in the primer? That tells you you've hit that primer. Now, you could have a little dent and it didn't fire. You know, hang fire, you have those issues where you'd still get a dent in the primer, but we know everyone fired. I didn't drop the hammer and get a click, right? Okay. So she's looking good. Big old gun. Wow. Speaking of the rifle, I was reading... Uh, Somebody's writing on, on this. They had done uh, pretty extensive testing. I forgot who it was. And uh, they, uh, they already done some chronographing and everything. And, and with at least the, uh, the seven and a half inch barrel version of this, this is a 10 inch, but with a seven and a half inch barrel, this person was getting, compared with his rifle, 500 feet per second less out of the seven and a half inch barrel revolver. Okay, just just a frame of reference. Everybody knows you're going to get less velocity, most of you, from uh, less velocity from a handgun or a shorter barrel. And uh, I would guess this is a 10-inch barrel. You'd probably be talking about a difference of maybe, you'll say, 400 feet per second less or something like in that neighborhood. That would be my guess. Uh, so you know, you do lose some velocity. Okay, keep that in mind. Uh, longer barrel, more velocity. And I'm going to shoot it again. We have two liters still surviving. Uh, they sell for around a thousand in that vicinity, I believe. Uh, you know, eleven. You know, check, check. You know, your favorite website. Hopefully, one of those is Buds, of course. But because uh, you know they help us, we like uh, people that support the people that support us, of course. But but look around and uh, and uh, you'll see it. I think in that vicinity and in a lot of different calibers. If it's something that interests you. You know, any firearm we bring here, I'm not trying to sell it to you. I'm just trying to show it to you and give you an honest opinion of it. You know, I, this is not something I would buy, I don't think. I can't imagine me, you know, a year from now, say, you know what, I missed that thing. I'm going to buy one because I could if I wanted, but I probably wouldn't. Uh, maybe because I don't hunt, but I do enjoy getting these kinds of things in and uh, shooting. Now, all those rounds are going in just beautifully and it's spinning just fine. Okay. So. I'll take, a, I'll take a lot of the blame, or maybe I'm all to blame for not having cleaned this one. Usually, I normally do that. I mean, almost invariably. But it just didn't fire it that much, and it, it seemed to be doing okay. And I, I guess that, that powder just built up there after the... Let's see. John and I, we shot it the other day a little bit. Probably had, including 10 hand loads uh, with dirty 2400 powder, which I use. It probably had uh, maybe 40 rounds, 30 to 40 rounds through it, okay? So, again, we like to give you what's going on outside the video and what's going on inside the video. But if you watch, you might know what's going on inside the video. Let's see if I can get that red two liter. All right. How about that green one up there? I'm not tested the windage too strong on here. Let's see how it's, uh, <laughs> 45, 70. Oh, I missed him. I think I have one more round, don't I? Uh, oh, I knew I was going to the left on that. No, I've got another round. Did y'all notice which way the cylinder goes? 
goes clockwise. I'm not sure that's up. It might not be up there, but this will be a good test for my flinch. It may go click. Nope, it didn't. <laughs> if you've seen our shooting tips playlist, that is one uh, method I recommend for uh, working on your flinch and all that is have some random dead rounds in the chamber or magazine. If you don't know for sure whether it's going to click or go bang, boy, when it goes click, it really shows you if you're flinching dramatically. So I like to do that occasionally. I really thought it was maybe going to be a click. I wasn't sure I had that thing up there. But anyway, the cylinder turns clockwise. And uh, that's a big old chunk of, of steel. No doubt about it. What have I forgot to tell you before it gets too dark on me here? Uh, my hand's fine. You know, it, it does kick. Oh, I know. <laughs> Speaking of that, I was going to shoot a couple of these uh, trophy bonded bear claws. But uh, it's, it doesn't, doesn't hurt you. It's got a nice grip on it. I'm not sure, that's not a Hogue, I guess. It's a, what's that symbol there of an eagle or something? Maybe it's an eagle grip. They make a lot of grips, but uh, the, the grip absorbs the recoil. Now these are the rounds, I think though, in what gun was it that uh, one of the rifles, they wanted to hang up in the chamber after you fired them a little bit. Maybe it was in the 50 or the 500 rounds in the Bighorn Armory. I forgot which one it was, but they really hard to get out of the chamber. Hopefully we won't have that go on with these. It was just that one rifle. In other rifles, I've not noticed any problems with them. Again, we're loading five. We're filling up the cylinder because of the transfer bar. I can feel that one rubbing a little bit, so we're getting a little bit dirtier, but still, still able to turn the cylinder. Although, yeah, I can feel that one rubbing up and then some see there it is right there that's the one that's not fully seated so that's the chamber that's a little bit dirty or maybe it's the one behind it now my hands are slippery from <laughs> keep her pointed down range you know what the other thing that's interesting about this firearm is when the loading gate is open the cylinder turns either way without any trouble and uh, dry my hands off there so I can get that turn. That ammo may just have a bigger head on it or something. Those cases, the fact that they're, I might just take those out uh, and just put like one in at a time. I don't want to hang up the cylinder. The bear claw might have, uh, with that uh, nickel plating, add just enough. Those two seem to be fine. And you get the offending cartridge out. And of course, again, it's not the. Uh, necessarily the cartridge just when you get a little bit of dirt in there turns fine of course but you can see through there there's not a big gap there not a big gap what you I think we got time to do this real quick let me take that back out and I'll show you what I would do if I was just out shooting here and I didn't have my cleaning fluids and all of that uh, the reason I brought that brush out here is quite often that's enough take this and run it through there you can see how dirty it gets in there. You get a few, a little grit in there, and sometimes that's all it takes if you've been shooting much. I run a good stiff brush through there, no lube or anything, just to get the worst of it out. It's a handy brush. I don't know where I got those. Just pick them up at a gun show or somewhere. Plus, they're stiff enough that they really do. Ah rub out you know some grit especially anything that's loose i think i got up all right let's put that back in see if we notice any difference you just never know what we're going to do here there's no charge for this extra lesson though we, we never charge you guys for these extra lessons okay so you never know though you might get a bill one day <laughs> from hickok 45 <laughs> $29.95 fee assessed for extra education in the last five videos that you watched. How would that be? Would that surprise you? All right. I can tell the way they go in here, I think. If, uh, see if that... Okay, those two seem fine. That one seemed fine. 
Of course, you don't know until you start turning the cylinder here. Yeah, let's put a. Let's go ahead and put five in. Oh, got to open that back up to spin it or turn it. It rubbing a little bit, but that got that got most of it out there. And again, I think that's maybe yeah. Those nickel plated cases might just be a tad different. All right, see if we can shoot these. All right, too bad I was able to get them in there. I could have uh, begged off on that. Because these are going to be a little more recoil, I think. Well, let's take out that pink two liter with this bear claw. <laughs> let's go wake up the gong again. Now let's try that uh, other ram. All right. What a great hunter I am. I might even try a pig. I will try a pig, put that way. Oh, missed him. Try him again. Okay. Well, there's another round. I was either too low or too high. Or could have been windage. One or the other. I'll bring it up a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not sure where I was going, but uh, I have noticed, as I've told you before, most of my shooting problems come down to two things, windage or elevation. So those fit in there a little bit better then. And, you know, once you fire them and they flatten out a little bit, of course, that helps too. All right, so you've uh, witnessed how many rounds it'll take uh, before it gets there. That's a dirty chamber right there. Before it gets kind of dirty on you and, well, no, it just wasn't lined up, I guess. And uh, you need to do a little cleaning or whatever. But for its intended purpose, uh, it wouldn't be a big problem. Yeah. Very uh, tight window there, so when you're ejecting that, again, it's not for gunfighting, good thing. Uh, I've noticed it's, you don't want to turn the cylinder as far as you think you do, like with a Colt. You know, if you turn down just a little more, that looks like that's about the right spot, doesn't it? But it catches on that edge, see that? Okay, comes right out there when you got it lined up properly. All right, so big gun. If you want to keep it clean, if you're going to fire more than 15, 20 rounds through it. And I'm going to fire it five more if you'll let me. Okay, see how these do. They all feel like they're going in fine without hanging up. And sometimes the contour of the actual bullet makes a difference. Uh, it can hang up. If there's a little dirt in there, the actual contour of the specific bullet, if it's a little uh, more like a wad cutter or something, not as pointed, it's more likely to, to get into the dirt. I see these don't seem to do that as much. Okay. Uh, I don't know if there's a, maybe a little fatter. Well, I mean, that might just be a little bit fatter. Okay. Wider. Further back. All right. Enough yakking. I guess we ought to shoot it one-handed a little more, right? We have anything to shoot at? There's a bowling pin. Uh, uh, <laughs> John's got him hung on a nail or something. Makes a good target, though. You don't have to worry about it, uh, the bullets bouncing back. You know that, uh, that uh, pot there didn't get really finished off, did it? <laughs> it did now. 4570 at close range. Let's put one on the gong with one hand if we can. If I can hold it out there. Uh. All right, sweet sound. I think I have one more round. I don't want to miss on the last round. All right, I didn't. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. Uh, to hold out like that too long. So let me empty it before I start swinging it around. Well, those big old pieces of brass are fun. 4570, as you all know, one of my favorite rounds. Such a classic cartridge goes back to 1873 and they introduced in the uh, trapdoor Springfield 
and it's still one of the most popular rounds among shooters. I mean, it's not as popular as a nine millimeter or something, but uh, uh, I, I used to get, I don't know where I'd see that information, emails or websites somewhere, the, someone compiles the, the most popular, uh, the most commonly sold reloading dies, for example. That kind of tells you something about what people are shooting, because uh, people who shoot a lot reload and kind of thing, and there's probably stats on the ammo that sells and all that too, but you know, 45, 70, all these old classic cartridges, they're, they're always up there near the top, you know, like 45, 70 might be like number five or something. You know, it's just amazing after all those years. And uh, that's one reason I like, uh, I wanted to get the revolver in that, get a big one. And uh, so anyway, if you want a big revolver, this is one, it's a big friendly revolver, BFR, big and friendly, and it's a revolver. Uh, like I say, tight tolerances, as you saw today. We don't normally edit anything. We just cut so we wouldn't you know, bore you guys with 10 minutes of going into the barn and cleaning and that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, you, know, you, you saw everything we did out here. And uh, by and large, it does, does fine. But you do want to keep it, I guess, on the negative side. It's a big old gun, <laughs> really big. Uh, ungainly looking and uh, just a, a big monstrosity uh, possibly it does feel better than it looks though I'll have to say uh, close tolerances you would want to keep it clean uh, you wouldn't want to go to battle with it probably with 800 cartridges and no time to, to clean it as you saw because you would want to take it apart and do that uh, but it's a it's a supposed to be an accurate revolver by all accounts it's very accurate and it only gets accurate uh, if it does have fairly close tolerances, it's made well. Okay, so that's that's what you get. That's one reason it got it gets dirty enough after whatever 15 shots or 20 shots that you might have a round, you know, protruding just enough or it's not seated quite deeply enough to keep from having problems. Okay, but for this first 10 or 15 seems to work just fine. Life is good. Hey dad, we throw me another pot. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm just setting up here for another video. Wanted to remind you guys to check out our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you get certified in gunsmithing and get an associate's degree in firearms technology. They also accept GI bills. So check them out over at sdi.edu. And also check out our friends at vaultexsafe.com. You've seen the pistol safes on the, uh, the, the main shooting table in some of our videos. So check them out if you need one of those. And also go to hickok45.com and you can find basically everything that you need to know about us. You can see all of our various supporters over there and stay up to date on uh, our Facebook pages and uh, Twitter, Hickok45 on Facebook, the real Hickok45 at Instagram, uh, there's also the Hickok 45 and Sun YouTube channel, all that kind of stuff, and full30.com. We've got videos over there. So just go to hickok45.com, and that's where you can basically find anything else you need to know. And also our store, don't forget that.